Hi, I'm Flourish, and I um, do fan things, and I run a Harry Potter con, and I'm a moderator. Yes, I'm Kimberly. Um, I lurk. I lurk. I'm <laughs> fan art. Um, I'm kind of in Sherlock, um, and I'm co-moderator with Flourish. Uh, I'm Corey Michelle. I run a webcomic um, that I've been doing fan art uh, since I was 14 and bounced around a lot of different fandoms. Uh, started in Sailor Moon um, and uh, graduated to this thing called Yaoi. <laughs> kind of. Uh, <laughs> my thoughts on, on Yaoi, yes. Um, I kind of took over my life and now um, I got a little bit of internet fame for. Um, my Tiger and Bunny, which is an anime, Tiger and Bunny parodies, comparing Bunny to Batman, My Parents Are Dead, um, all, the, all the good um, old uh, comparison memes there. Um, uh, uh, big Wind Up and Natsume's Book of Friends are my big, I'm mostly in the anime fandom, so. I'm Beth H, also known as Beth Beth Beth, and I've been involved in online fandom for about 16, 17 years. Got into online fandom through Highlander, on uh, the news groups on Deja News, and then spent about 10 years roaming around Harry Potter after Due South, and am now moving into Sherlock, although I also <laughs> run a, and I'm a writer, I'm a fan writer, and I run a recommendation site that has about 100 fandoms represented uh, in terms of <laughs> fan writing and things like that, so. I'm Morgan, I'm better known as Fem or Fem Cooksotic. I'm a fan writer. I have been in fandom since 1996 when I got into the X-Files. And I've been in Harry Potter for about 10 years now, uh, with a brief detour into fandom for a year and a half, and then came back to my true love, Harry Potter. I'm still there for now. <laughs> um, I'm Alice X Zang, or Alice X Z online, and I do a lot of fan art. I'm really into Sherlock. <laughs> and Doctor Who, although I haven't seen enough episodes to really be into that. And I was really obsessed with Harry Potter for a while, too. Uh, I do art for whatever like strikes my fancy at the time, and I also yell online a lot about stuff that I like. <laughs> Yay! Cool. Yay! So, um, so yes. Oh wait, I will, I will ask if you won't. Um, so. <laughs> To start off with, there's a lot of things on the internet that are based on existing TV series or books or whatever, but we don't call all of them fan works. I'm pretty sure that we don't think that everything on the internet that's based on a TV show is a fan thing. Um, what differentiates the stuff that people on this panel do from, say, a meme wherein you have, you know, a Pokemon <laughs> doing funny things? Because yeah. sometimes we draw Pokemon doing funny things or whatever, and they're not the same. Why? Um, I think, uh, and it's something I've written a little bit about before, I think what differentiates a fan work from, uh, I guess, a regular meme, whatever the regular meme is, um, is um, familiarity inside information. So um, if, you're, if you're looking at a, an Avatar The Last Airbender um, macro or fan vid or something, um, if you're not familiar with the narrative, you might not get it. But something like, you know, Success Kid, he, you know, that's funny because he's making a funny face. Um, I think some of the line, the line, though incredibly blurry, blurry, might be drawn at where you do or don't need inside information to get the joke or get the content. Yeah, and even when they involve a, a specific fandom, it's things that are so well known say, a sparkly vampire for Twilight that you don't have to have seen any of the Twilight movies or read any of the Twilight novels to sort of get that, right? Yeah. I think for me it also um, builds upon canon and kind of tells a, a different story, particularly in the writing, but also I think in art and vids, you can tell stories through pictures and video. So for me, fan works kind of build upon that canon and expand it a little bit. I think fan works are done by people who like love the show or love the book, right? Um, a lot of the parodies and memes are, you know, parodies and memes. And a lot of fan work is done simply because somebody really likes the show and they wanted to express their love or expand on the canon, like you said. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, so one of the things we were wondering is that, at least from my perspective, coming, I mean, I kind of did fan art when I was little and then sort of moved on to non-fan art type things, but 
in the communities I was in at the time, there was always this kind of attitude that fan work was not as legitimate as original works. So um, what, is, what is your take on that? Because it seems like the, the meme stuff is also sort of ironically distanced, right? A lot of times, and fan work is sometimes ironically distanced, but, but I think the majority of it are things like this, which was, you know, making people cry. <laughs> which I totally <laughs> was you. about to, too, when I first saw it. So, I mean, what, yeah, like, if, if we're trying to make something which is serious and is making people cry and so on, then that brings up that question of legitimacy, right, in a way which ironic things don't. Oh, boy. <laughs> wow. So, so uh, the question of, uh, did you want to start? No, you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> On the question of legitimacy, there's, there's this huge, you know, if you're a fan artist, People go, oh, why don't you do original stuff? You know, why are you piggybacking on them? Why are you, why are you using other people's content? Why are you profiting from other people's content? And I like, it always comes down to why the inner, inner um, expletive here. Um, does it matter how legitimate they're trying to be? Tons of fan, fan artists and fanfic writers have day jobs that have nothing to do with writing or art and they do this stuff for fun. And they're like they're not looking to, you know, uh, you know, break into their own, you know, they don't want to write their own novels or or whatever. What they've got in fandom is you've got a playground. You've got a universe to play in. You've got your characters, you've got a dollhouse, and you can you know create things. Um, so, so the first problem with the question of legitimacy is assuming that everybody wants to, you know, create original content. Um, sometimes it's just not, a, just not a concern. Sometimes it's for fun. Yeah, and that certainly isn't um, a consideration. If somebody say is a knitter, if somebody knits, and you say, "Oh, I knit for a hobby," the first question people have is not, "Well, why are you knitting for a hobby? Why don't you sell your knitting?" They understand that people want to knit for fun. They understand that people want to go out and play golf for fun. But somehow with this, the creation of fan art, the creation of fan bids or fan writing, somehow it's, well, why aren't you selling it? Why are you wasting your time doing this instead of going out and selling it when that's the last? I mean, many fan writers that I know, certainly including myself, we do write for publication under other names. And, you know, it's, that's our job. This is not our job. This is our hobby. This is our fun. You know, our love. So, yeah. And I, I also want to add too about the legitimate um, legitimization is that um, it, this is a very girl centric. You know, this is a fan girl panel. That the that the creation of fan works, the creation of fan art and fan writing, not exclusively by any stretch of the imagination, but it is. The majority is populated by women, women and girls. And I think that that does add to a further um, marginalization for us and makes it a less legitimate kind of activity, a less interesting thing. I've been involved in sports fandom, and I mean the kind of sports fandom where men are painting their faces every week at ball games and you know buying Sports <laughs> Illustrated and wearing the t-shirts and traveling all around the, the country to see games. And they're spending thousands and thousands of dollars and nobody's saying, why don't you get a real job? You know, that's their fandom, that's their love, and it's perfectly fine to spend 20 hours a day you know, crunching numbers on a fantasy baseball team, but this isn't okay for a lot of people. Um, last year, I wrote about 250,000 words of fanfic. My mother asked me, why did you not spend that time writing something that could be published and you could make money off of it? And my reaction to that was, well, those 250,000 words that I wrote were things that I loved and I wanted to write for myself. That doesn't preclude that I could write something for original publication. In fact, I have some things that I am writing for original publication. But I write the fan stuff because I want to. And for me, that's legitimate enough. Yeah. Um, also, the question of original content. I'm taking these characters, yes, that somebody else has created, but a lot of times I'm taking characters that have one name, one mention in a book, like Blaze Zabini, <laughs> who's barely in Harry Potter. I make of him my own character. I put my own spin on him. I put all these characters in my own situations, and I do feel like that originalizes it a lot for myself. Yes, I'm working off someone's canon, but I'm, I'm telling my own stories. So, you know, I, I do see it still as somewhat original in a way. Um, 
terms of legitimacy, I think I've gotten some criticism saying that, you know, your artwork is so detailed and why don't you work on more original stuff? But I think I really like connecting to other fans and, you know, making people cry. <laughs> but, you know, they're crying because, like, they love the show too and they know, they know the character. And so it, there's, like, I feel like with fan art, there's, like, a special, like, dimension, like, where, like, the viewer probably already knows the entire history of the character and, like, a good piece of fan art could really bring out some intense emotions about that and I think for a good fanfic that's like that too mm -hmm. and I think I, I actually work pretty hard to like put out like good I know this sounds weird but like I try and like like put do the best possible work because I feel really passionate for this thing and I feel like there's like good fan art and there's bad fan art you know <laughs> <laughs> and, <I> like, <laughs> and just like there's like good original drawings and there's bad original drawings and I feel like like I feel like making like really good fan art or for me like reading really good fanfic like it really hits like this emotional fangirly caramel center <laughs> that like nothing else can like do that for me like I feel like sometimes fanfic like moves me more than the original content did even though I still love the original content but like people are making fan works because you know sometimes a show only has like three episodes <laughs> like Sherlock and it's like what am I going to do with all these emotions you know I have to go find <laughs> more content and satiate this need, I don't know. <laughs> you're, you're, you're talking about good and bad. I mean, but that's true for everything, isn't it? Um, the yeah. science fiction writer Theodore Sturgeon said, and I'm going to misquote him entirely, that 95% of writing is crud. You know, and it is. I mean, 95% of fanfic is crud, too. Yeah. But that's OK. You know, it's not for everybody. But, right? You know, I have actually read fanfic that has far exceeded the oh. source material. <laughs> one yeah. in particular that I want to just mention, which is written by Calanthe Fix, which is called, I think, Blood and Brimstone. It is a crossover between Harry Potter and a book that a lot of people don't know called Wicked Gentleman, which is kind of a male-male um, story. And she crafted this fic that brought both of these source materials together, and it is so much better than either one of them. It's an amazing story. To be fair, J.K. Rowling being a better writer than her is not that hard. <laughs> this, is, this is true, but it's just one of those things that you would read it and you would think it would be, it, it should have been an original story. I mean, yeah. not that it should have been an original story, but it feels like it is source material in and of itself. It is just an amazing way that she's brought those yeah. two materials together. So this is actually not on our list of questions, but it's something that came up I've, as you were talking. Yeah, I've got another go, point go, to go, go, legitimacy. Go, go. Um, the, second, the second level of legitimacy question for me is what we consider, yeah, how we frame original work. Because if we look at the way, say, comic book art is done, I always bring up Adam Hughes, who is a fantastic, um, you know, he, he does covers for comic books, uh, especially the recent Catwoman comics. Um, like if you think about the way that that those commissions work, he like he didn't write Catwoman, and he is making fantastic pictures of Catwoman, of of Superwoman, of uh, uh, Power Girl. What's her name? Oh, yeah, girl. The boob window. The boob Power, window. Power Girl. Power girl. Power girl. <laughs> um, and like no, like is it okay because he's getting paid to yeah. do it? You know. Um, well, it's like Lee Goldberg who does tie-in novels for the TV show Monk talking about how fan fiction is like the work of the devil, you know, and yet he's basically right. writing fan fiction, but he's getting paid, so it's, yeah. it's Look at the Star thing. Wars novels, like, it is, it's the same thing, and the legitimacy then apparently is whether you get paid for it or not. On the other hand, there are people, um, I think of Yamino, who does Sister Claire, so a great webcomic, um, she and, and several other people who are big in the um, Adventure Time fandom have been called on to do guest covers. A, a, a girl I know who's going to be at the uh, Maine Comic Arts Fest. They're debuting um, uh, one of. They're revealing one of the covers that she did, and she, you know, she works at a comic book shop and does fan art. And um, now, now, where is the line of legitimacy? She was doing fan art, and they said, "Hey, do a cover for us." Like, mm -hmm. it's it's continuously getting blurred as fandom gets pulled in by the younger people who are running media now. Yeah. So the. the that's a wonderful point. Thank you for t stopping me from asking another question, which was off topic. Well, it's not really off topic. Um.